everyone and I thank you guys so much for tuning in to yet another episode of My Orchid Adventure, of course with me, Maria Young. So in today's episode, unfortunately, I am going to be the bearer of bad news. Uh, definitely, it's not going to be a happy episode, but I tell you what, it's going to be a very informative and very educational episode that I hope is beneficial for you. And I'm going to show you the examples of some of the devastating things that I have been going through here recently. Now, as you guys know, orchid growers will be facing a lot of different things in accordance to trying to keep our orchids healthy. Now, of course, because we are orchid growers and we have these beautiful, magnificent plants, these plants are susceptible to so many different things from your viral infections, bacterial infections, fungal infections, sicknesses, and also diseases. But not only that, they are also susceptible to different types of predators, insects and pests that are also out there as well, such as different types of mites and mealy bugs and also snails and slugs and thrips and I mean the list absolutely goes on. And I'm going to show you again some of the devastating things that have been happening right here in my garden. Okay folks, so here recently I got quite a scare. As you guys know, I have been dealing with a bout of the definite F word in the orchid kingdom, the disease that we call Fusarium. And then I started noticing some strange occurrences that were also happening with my orchids. So yeah, I didn't know what was going on and I definitely had to get to the bottom of things or definitely down to the root of the matter and this led me to this discovery. One of the first things that I started noticing is that my orchids that were coming into spike started to show some signs of browning. Also, the ones that did come into bloom, they started showing some definite signs also. And the signs that I started noticing in the blooms were actually wilting and deformation of the blossoms. Also, I started noticing some heavy browning that was also going on in the petals as well. And majority of the blooms would actually blast. And I was even fortunate to get these right here. And also I started noticing that even with my new acquisitions that I recently put in my garden, all of a sudden the blooms just started prematurely wilting. And of course, as you can see, they are definitely showing signs that something is going on. And here are some blooms also that were once beautiful and magnificent. And as you can see, they have also prematurely wilted. These blooms only lasted about a week. And you guys know, these normally would last about a month to even two months. So what the phalaenopsis is going on, folks? Spike after spike, completely fizzling out and aborting itself. And even when I watered my orchids, I noticed something definitely strange going on. The water that would actually hit the blossoms would turn brown, as you can see in this water right here at the tip of the blossom. And so I started inspecting the blossoms just a little bit more closely, and I did start noticing these tiny, tiny insects on my plants. So I started taking a look at all of my flowers that were in bloom. And indeed, I did start noticing the same thing. Those black little tiny insects hiding within the blossoms and throughout the plant itself. And indeed, as I took a closer look at all of the blossoms that were wilting and fading, I found those black little dots and have come to a determination that what I am dealing with is thrips. Thrips can exist anywhere on your orchid plant. They can exist on the leaves, on the stem and cane area, even in the axles and the nooks and crannies of the leaves, and they also can exist right down into your media. Now, it is important to know that once they lay the eggs, it takes about a week or two for them to hatch, so after you have treated it already the first time, remember you're going to have to continue to treat it to ensure that each and every last one of those hideous thrips creatures are destroyed. 
Okay, folks, so it has been determined what I am dealing with is this hideous bout of thrips. These hideous, hideous, nasty predator of insects that like to feast and suck the juices out of your plants until, of course, it is so weak that if you don't get a handle of it, it will definitely take your orchid out, okay? So all of the signs that I showed you is definitely all signs of thrips. And, of course, if you see those little dark, well, I'm not even going to say dark because they come in all sorts of colors. Sometimes they'll be in white, sometimes they'll be brown, or they can be black, as you've seen. And they're such teeny weeny little critters that they are so hard to see until you see a bunch of them. And even when you see a bunch of them, you might even think it's just dust or dirt or whatever. You might not even know they're insects unless you really look at them and then you start seeing them move. Now, once you start seeing signs on your orchids, whether they be on the leaves, or on the flower petals or even the aborted spikes you have to know that those are signs that they are very well established in your plants and they have been sucking the juices out of your plants to where now it's definitely getting to a point that they are weakening your orchids so you have to get a handle on it you have to jump on it really quick and try all that you can to go ahead and eradicate these little beasts okay so as of right now what I am planning on doing you guys know I do the Listerine the gold variety that's what I use on my orchid plants but I have to admit this season right here I haven't been so regular in definitely maintaining my orchids with this solution that I would fight off um, fungus and bacteria and of course insects and slugs and snails this is good for almost everything okay this is like my miracle worker well I haven't been doing that and that could be one of the causes to why this has happened and now they're kind of running amok in my garden now I'm not quite sure if this will work on them but I definitely am gonna give it a try because this is a lighter form of non-toxic chemicals as you guys know a lot of your insecticides are really potent and powerful and not only can they have an effect on the critters and insects and pests that you want to get rid of but they can also have an effect on your garden friends as well and you guys know that I have a lot of lizards and frogs and all sorts of things that I love and adore in my garden and I don't want to have them have any devastating effects on them because they do so much for my orchids as well so that is why I'm opting to use the Listerine and I'm finger crossing that it works folks I'm really really hoping that if you guys have a better solution and something has definitely worked for you please be sure to let us know please be sure to post those comments below because I need all the help that I can get and there you have it folks those are some of the nasty despicable things that I am currently facing right now in my garden and it's a very unfortunate thing that is happening to me right now because we are going into our winter season which means that these plants these orchids are actually going to go indoors in a confined space and as you guys know when it's confined and they're all close together that's when you're gonna notice true infestations and also infections and all sorts of things that will really come about so it's very important that I get a grip on it now totally get full control over it and then bring them indoors. I don't want to bring them indoors in this condition right now. So I am going to find a way. Again, I walk by faith and not by sight and I'm already declaring that right now, okay? And I want to ask you guys to please keep your fingers crossed all over the world that I can indeed find a way. And when I do, I'm going to share it with you guys because you already know sharing is caring and learning is growing and we definitely want to stay bonded and we want to learn and grow together so definitely stay tuned for more